Good Thursday evening. Hope you had a wonderful day in the Lord. I mixed up the dates. For some reason, I was thinking today was either the 6th or the 4th. And I read the series of Psalms 6, 36, 66, 96 this morning when it should have been Psalms 5, 35, 65, 95, so on. So anyway, but the Lord has a reason for everything. We're going to start with the chapter, which is the last one in 1 Samuel. And it's a sad one. We knew it was inevitable. And I went back to the early chapters in 1 Samuel when Saul first came on the scene and how they said, oh, he was a goodly uh, young man. He was tall, of course, handsome, strong, and you know, he was looking for his uh, dad's lost animals, right? And he didn't know that he would have been the leader at that time. So he started out well. Remember, he didn't want to brag and he was able to hold his peace and not tell his uncle that he was the chosen one, right? He had a great beginning, but somewhere along the way, you know, the enemy, you know, well, I'll just say he started doing things his own way. And we have to be careful that we stay humble, all of us, because we might start out really great, but God is so loving and he gives us another chance. He wants us to do well. He knows our end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. And he has a plan for each one of us. But in this chapter, 1 Samuel 31, this is where Saul dies and it was prophesied that um, he would pass and his sons would pass and all three of them uh, died in battle. But Saul's death was so uh, tragic to me and what happened was that he was in battle with the Philistines and they were fighting hard and they came against Israel and Saul was wounded from the the arrows and the spears or and he still was alive but he was like mm -mm, no he told his armor bearer nope go ahead and stab me because i do not want to be mocked so even in that time he had so much pride he was like uh-uh you kill me i do not want it to be said that the philistines killed me and his armor bearer refused it says in verse uh, three, he was wounded of the archers. And then he said, draw thy sword, thrust me. And then since the armor bearer wouldn't do it, he just uh, decided in verse four, he took his own sword and he fell upon it and he pretty much killed himself. And the armor bearer was traumatized too. He didn't want to live and he killed himself too. Really sad. And afterwards, the Philistines, um, the enemies, saw their dead bodies. He and his sons, uh, they cut off Saul's head and they attached their corpses to um, the temple where they did um, all this uh, idol worship. Really sad. And that's in verse 10. Yeah, they put it on the wall of Beth Shan. Anyway. It pays to be humble and stay in the Lord's presence, you know, for you to even think about uh, how someone would get the credit even in death. Oh, my goodness. When it doesn't matter. And my son was in the library at his campus, but he was able to give insight on this chapter. And his perspective is uh, what spoke to him was a whole chapter. Samuel tried to prevent his enemies from mocking him by ending himself, but they did so anyway. Yeah, because, right, they decapitated him. It's, not, it's most important to not care what people will say. Hallelujah. I hope you take that to heart, son, because he looked even stupider. It's actually more stupid. Falling on his own sword. Yeah, the enemy wants to make a fool out of all of us, and we have to be careful at all times. That's why going into Psalms 5, we have to 
make sure that the Lord is a priority and he orders our day so we don't give room at all, give place to the enemy. And in Psalms 5, 3, it says, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning. He is the priority. We're saying, Lord, you're going to hear us. Oh, Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up because you are our ultimate compass. The enemy wants to dig a, a pit or dig a hole and put our soul in a pit. And that's in Psalms 35, 7. But no, the Lord will not have it as we trust in the Lord. Psalms 125. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Suicide is not the answer. I understand that darkness is real. It is prevalent. Depression is rampant. But we have to put our trust and our priority and our hope in the Lord and walk alongside someone who has the light, who can be compassionate and listen and uh, be with you and pray with you and go through this journey with this person who might be struggling. But know that God will do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. That's in verse four of the 125, four. He wants us to have a great future and the peace will be upon us as we put him as a priority and stay and trust in his presence. Hallelujah. I hope you have a wonderful evening and be the light for someone who's suffering in darkness. It is real, but God is even more real. Have a good evening.